Let's take a look at the decimals questions. Now, all of these are non-calculator. So question number one, which is bigger, 7.91 or 7.67? In the units column, everything is the same. But in the tenths column, we've got a 9 and a 6. 9 is bigger than 6, so 7.91 is bigger than 7.67. Question number two, we've got 3.52 and 3.54. In the units, everything is the same. In the tenths, everything is the same. But in the one hundredths, we've got a two and a four. Four is bigger than two, so 3.54 is bigger than 3.52. Question number three, 5.0814 and 5.0841. In the units, everything's the same. In the tenths, everything's the same. In the hundredths, everything is the same. But in the thousandths, we've got a one and a four. 4 is bigger than 1, so therefore 5.0841 is greater. Question number 4, adding decimals is nothing to be scared of. 50.45, the key thing is make sure your decimal points are in line. It's kind of hard to get it wrong with this question because we have two digits to the left of the decimal point in both numbers and two digits to the right of the decimal point in both numbers. And the key thing also is make sure you put a decimal point in line in your answers. Uh, in the answer box and now just add up each column 5 plus 3 is 8 4 plus 1 is 5 0 plus 6 is 6 5 plus 1 is 6 so the answer is 66.58 if you can add 5045 and 1613 then this isn't any harder you just got a dot um, in the middle of the number that's all question number 5 similar to question 4 23.92 plus 60.42 in the answer box, keep the decimal point in line. 2 plus 2 is 4. 9 plus 4 is 13. 3 carry the 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. 2 plus 6 is 8. So the answer is 84.34. Question number 6. 61.22. Take away 52.96. Again, let's keep the decimal point in line and another decimal point in the answer box. Two take away six can't be done, so we'll borrow from the next column. Two becomes one, 12 becomes six. 12 minus six is six. One minus nine can't be done, so one becomes zero. And this one becomes an 11. 11 minus nine is two. Zero minus two can't be done, so the six becomes a five. The zero becomes a 10. 10 minus two is eight. Five minus five is zero. So the answer is 8.26. Question seven. Multiplying decimals is a bit harder, so what I always suggest is ignore the decimals. Let's call this 0, 7 times 55. In other words, 7 times 55. So what is 55 times 7? 5 sevens are 35, carry 3. 5 sevens are 35, plus 5 is 36, 37, 38. So we just need to adjust this number. 55 times 7 is 385, so what is 0. 0.7 times 5.5? All you need to do is see how many digits are there in the question that are after the decimal point? Well, we've got one digit here and a digit here, so two digits in total. So therefore, because there are two decimal places in the question, we need two decimal places in the answer. So if I put the decimal point here, I've created one, two decimal places, so 3.85. Question number eight, I'm just gonna ignore the decimal points and just do 86 multiplied by 28. 8 6 is a 48, 8 carry the 4, 8 8 is a 64, 64 plus 4 is 68. Now I'm going to move on to the 2, it's the 2 of 20, so put in a 0. 2 6 is a 12, 2 carry the 1, 2 8 is a 16, plus 1 is 17. Add these two rows up, 8, 10, 6 plus 1 is 7, plus 7 is 14, carry the 1, 2. So if 86 times 28 is 2408, then 8.6 times 2.8, we have one, two decimal places. So one, two decimal places need to be created. So the answer is 24.08. Question number nine, what's 14.1 multiplied by 7.5? Well, first of all, let's work out what 141 times by 75 is. So start with the five, five ones are five. 5 4 is a 20, 5 1 is a 5, 6 7. Put in a 0, this is the 7 of 70. 7 times 1 is 7, 7 4 is a 28, 
one, seven is seven, eight, nine. Let's add these up. Five, seven, 15, 10. So 141 times 75 is 10,575, but we want 14.1 multiplied by 7.5. Now, we just need to count up the number of decimal places in the question. Well, we've got, there's one digit after the decimal point in 14.1 and one digit after the decimal point in 7.5. So in total, we have two decimal places. So therefore we need to create two decimal places in our answer. So the answer is 105.75. Question 10, 9.2 divided by four. This question is no more difficult than 92 divided by four. Um, so we need to do a bus stop method. So how many fours go into 9.2? The only thing we need to remember is just put decimal point above, done. And now it is literally exactly the same as how many fours go into 92. How many fours go into nine? Well, that's two with a remainder of one. How many fours go into 12? Three. So the answer is 2.3. Easy. Question 11, now this is a little bit on the horrible side. Dividing into a decimal is no problem at all. You just need to remember to put a decimal point above the line. But dividing by a decimal is pretty horrible, really. What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both of these numbers by 10, and we've got 136 divided by 17. Now, uh, a lot of people struggle with this. They, um, If I asked you what eight divided by four is, you'd tell me, okay, easy, two. And if I said, well, what's 80 divided by 40? Most students I work with tell me that the answer is 20 originally. And then I say, well, how many 40s go into 80? Two. So you can see by uh, multiplying both numbers by 10, it doesn't affect the answer. So 13.6 divided by 1.7 is, is the same question as 136 divided by 17. But by multiplying by 10, I've made it a bit easier because we're dealing with um, we're dealing with whole numbers, not decimals. However, the question is still really horrible because obviously we don't know our 17 <clears throat> times table very well. And um, we could try the bus stop method, but I'm not sure this is going to work very well. How many 17s go into one? Zero. Move the one over. How many 17s go into 13? Zero. Move the 13 over. How many 17s go into 136? Well, that was the original question. So what we're gonna to have to do is build up our 17 times table. So just write it out. One times 17 is 17. Uh, 34 for two 17s. Then uh, three 17s is, um, do you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna bother with three 17s. I'm just gonna double it, double it again to make four 17s, which is 68. And I'm gonna double that again, 68 times by two. Oh, that so happens it's 136. I mean, I could have worked out three, five, six, and seven as well, but uh, you, you, I just skipped a few steps to try and hit my target a bit quicker. So we can see that eight times 17 is 136. So therefore, 136 divided by 17 is therefore eight. So therefore, 13.6 divided by 1.7 is also eight. We're gonna do the same thing with question 12. 52.8 divided by 3.3 is the same as 528 divided by 33. So let's see how this goes. Can we use a bus stop method? How many 33s go into five? None. How many 33s go into 52? Uh, well, it goes once with a remainder of, well, what's the difference between 52 and 33? Well, if it was 53, that would be a difference of 20, but it's 52, so that's a difference of 19. So uh, we're going to have to work out how many 33s go into 198, which isn't a lot of fun, really. So what we're going to have to do is build up our 33 times table. So 1 times 33 is 33. 2 33s are 66. 3 is 99. Um, I've spotted that if I double 99, I get 198. So therefore, if I double three, that's six. So six times 33 is 198. Um, but you might have just done, well, what are four 33s, five 33s, and now six 33s. So six times 33 is 198. So therefore, 198 divided by six is 33. So therefore, 198 divided by 33 is six. So the answer here is 16. Not much fun, that last one. Uh, and also question 11. 